Okay, Apple just released iOS 16.1, and while I normally don't make software update videos so quickly uh, after like a major software update, there are a lot of new features in 16.1 that I think are worth sharing. So let's not waste any time, and let's get right into the video with one of the newest features for 16.1, and that is live activity. So live activities are now available to third-party apps, and this is going to take some time to fully roll out to your favorite third-party apps, although some have already been updated to take advantage of this new feature. The easiest way to see this feature in action for yourself is to go to Apple's clock app and just set a timer. Now, if you have an iPhone 14 Pro, of course, you already know that this live activity can be viewed on the top of your iPhone's display in the new Dynamic Island area. However, if you go to your lock screen, you'll also now be able to see the live activity there as well. Of course, this already worked for the clock app in iOS 16, but I'm just saying, if you don't have a third-party app, this is a great way to see it. So you can now see the timer counting down, and then you also get controls uh, like play or pause for the lock screen, and then you can also cancel it right from the lock screen. Now, there are some third-party apps that actually are updated for 16.1 and already do take advantage of this live activities feature, although there aren't that many, but one of them that I did find is called Sports Alerts. However, because no games are on right now while I'm making this video, uh, it just gives you the time of when the game starts, which is also kind of pretty handy. Now, live activities are still early, and while I think I'm going to have them enabled, you may want to pick and choose which apps have control over this live activity feature. If you don't want constant updates on your lock screen, so if you don't want that, then you may want to disable live activities from being on your lock screen or in the dynamic island. Well, each app actually has a toggle for this now, so you can pick and choose which apps get access to this feature. To disable or enable an app for live activities, go to settings, Scroll down to the app that supports live activities, tap on that app, and now you will see a new toggle for live activities. Just toggle that off, and now these apps won't show up in your live activity feed. Now, this next tip is for iPhone 14 Pro users only, and that has to do with the new Dynamic Island. So 16.1 has some changes for the new Dynamic Island, including outlining apps with different colors when there is a dark background behind them. However, what if you want it to get rid of an app in the Dynamic Island? Like, maybe you don't want to see the timer constantly up there if you have like a long timer. Or maybe you don't care about some of the information uh, from an app that is currently in the Dynamic Island that is being presented to you. Well, here's a hidden feature to get rid of the information in the Dynamic Island. To do this, all you have to do is swipe left or right on the Dynamic Island and any app that is using it will disappear and the island will go back to its regular pill-shaped cutout. Now, if you want the live activity back on top, all you have to do is simply swipe on the dynamic island again and your activity will come right back into view. Now, another new trick in 16.1 is to use reachability, which now supports the dynamic island as well. If you don't already know what reachability does, uh, basically it allows you to swipe on the bottom of your iPhone's display to bring content on the top of the display into reach. This is useful, especially on bigger phones like the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and especially when you're using the phone one-handed. So first of all, to enable reachability, go to settings, scroll down to accessibility, then tap on touch. And right at the top, you'll see the toggle for this reachability setting. Turn that on, and then anytime you swipe down on the bottom of your display, right by the dock area, you'll bring not only the content from the top of the display down, but also now in 16.1, the dynamic island, and you can now fully interact with the dynamic island in reachability mode. Now, a new tip that everyone can take advantage of in 16.1 is easier customization of your lock screen or home screen settings. To do this, go to your lock screen, long press on the lock screen, and then hit customize now. Now, your lock screen settings and your wallpaper settings will separate into two separate windows. So if you want to edit your lock screen, tap on lock screen. If you want to edit the way your home screen looks, tap on home screen. This is a much better way to customize these separate areas individually, as before you would have to edit your lock screen and home screen at the same time every time you want to change something. It was really annoying. Thankfully, that is no longer the case in 16.1. Another feature enabled by 16.1 is Apple's new shared library for photos. This allows you to share the photos you take automatically with a group of five people that you select. To enable this, just go to settings, scroll down to photos, and now you will see a new section in the photo settings for shared library. Click on the shared library, and then you'll have the ability to add who you want to add to this shared library from your contacts, 
Once you invite the people you wanna share photos with, you'll get the option to share all photos and videos, choose by people or date, or choose manually. Now, once you go through all these settings, these are all personal preferences on how you wanna set them up. Well, then you go back to the settings area after that, and you can always go and add more participants, or you know, if you wanna delete the shared library, maybe you didn't wanna share these photos with these people anymore, you can do that too. I think by far my favorite way to use this feature, or at least the way I think I'll wanna use this feature for the shared library, isn't to necessarily automatically share all my photos, uh, but to do it manually. Now, there's so many times that you're with your family or a group of friends, and at the end of the night, they ask you for all the photos that you took at that event. Well, now, when you go to those events, you can just quickly toggle this in your camera app to save photos to that shared library. So to do this, just open up the camera, and now on the top left, you'll see a new icon with two people in it, Tap on that icon, and now any photo you take with this enabled will automatically share those photos to your shared library. And when you want to save photos back to your personal camera library, just toggle that feature back off, and then all the photos you take from there on out will just be saved in your personal library. I think that is one of the best ways to use this feature, and I think it's one of the easiest ways to understand it. And hey, I just like having that manual control right at the top of my camera app. I think that was actually a really smart implementation. Okay, now I want to cover a tip I already covered in my last iOS 16 video, because there was a lot of people that actually couldn't take advantage of this, but now it is available to a wider range of iPhone devices, and that is showing the battery percentage on your iPhone. To do this, go to settings, scroll down to battery, and there at the top, you will find the toggle for battery percentage. Now, when you turn this on, if you were on iOS 16 using this feature before, you'll notice some new changes on how this battery percentage indicator looks. Because now it doesn't just show the number of the battery percentage, it now also gives a visual indication of how much the battery is drained in the battery indicator. So you can see kind of how much the battery is being drained along with that number. Furthermore, when I last covered this feature, it was not available on the iPhone XR, iPhone 11, iPhone 12 mini, and iPhone 13 mini. Now with iOS 16.1, those phones are now supported with this battery percentage feature. So everyone who was complaining to me that they can't access this battery percentage feature on their phone, well, you're going to be very happy with this update. I think now any iPhone that has a notch or the dynamic island can take advantage of this new battery percentage indicator. Furthermore, there's also another trick for charging your phone on 16.1. In certain areas, you can now take advantage of a new clean energy charging feature. To enable this, stay in the battery settings area, but this time, tap on battery health and charging. On the bottom of this page, you will see a new toggle for clean energy charging. Now, this feature is on by default, and this feature will try to reduce your carbon footprint by selectively charging when lower carbon emissions electricity is available. Now, according to Apple, it's pretty smart about how you use your phone. And if you're charging your phone at like a new location, like say you're on a trip uh, or on vacation or whatever, uh, the charging system is smart enough to know not to enable this feature. So here's a way maybe where you can potentially reduce your carbon footprint just a bit. And hopefully that also means cheaper, you know, like a cheaper electricity bill when you're charging with cleaner energy that is available. Okay, now here's a quick tip for iPhone users without an Apple Watch. Here's my tip, get an Apple Watch. Now nah, I'm just kidding, but hey, if you always wanted to use Apple Fitness Plus, uh, that fitness workout service, before you needed an Apple Watch to use it, well now, you, if you just need an iPhone. You can access Apple Fitness Plus on your iPhone without an Apple Watch. Okay, finally, to bring this video full circle, I recently did a tips and tricks video on macOS Ventura. However, uh, while this next tip is a Mac tip, it is also a very handy iPhone tip because you need an iPhone to use this feature and that is to use your iPhone as a webcam if you own a Mac and it can be updated to macOS Ventura. And I'll let macOS Ventura Greg explain how this feature works. To use your iPhone as a webcam. So uh, basically what you gotta do is whenever you're going into like a video call or uh, if you open up QuickTime Player, which we're gonna do right here, um, you're going to see a new option. So if you go over to this like record section over here, click on this drop down menu, you're gonna see that normally it will default to the webcam right there on the MacBook. Uh, but you'll also see there's now another option. You can actually connect. I, it says Greg's iPhone 13 Pro 2. This is an iPhone 14. That's kind of weird. I, I guess I have to rename this. But anyway, you can click on uh, this and watch what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna click on this and it's gonna connect to my iPhone over here. And basically, it's a little connection. So now, look at that. Wow, it's already connected. You can see that the uh, webcam feed is now on the iPhone 
and you can just basically use this as a webcam. So show someone something you wanna walk around, take like a FaceTime call or uh, like a Zoom meeting just right from your iPhone if you're on your MacBook, or that also means, again, you can use this as a webcam. Uh, if you are going to use it as a webcam, you're gonna need something like this MagSafe uh, Belkin adapter, which attaches right on your MacBook, or use something like a tripod with like an iPhone adapter. This is pretty cool though. This, is, this was like $30. Uh, it's a very cool accessory. Basically, it just magnetically connects to the back of your iPhone with MagSafe. And you basically just have this little lip right over here. And basically, you just place it right down on top of your MacBook's uh, like top lid on the display and actually stays up like this. So you can see right over here, we got the iPhone set up. It is using the camera for the webcam. Great job, Mac OS Ventura. Greg, you didn't look like you aged a day. You really nailed that presentation. You know what, let's, let's all give uh, uh, Mac OS Ventura, Greg, a round of applause. Great job, buddy, great job. All right, and those are my new updated iOS 16.1 tips and tricks. There is actually a lot to go over in this video, which is why I made it, and I hope that these tips and tricks turned out to be just as helpful as my original iOS 16 tips and tricks video. If it was, be sure to let me know by leaving me a like and letting me know what your favorite tip in this video was. And if you wanna see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. I always appreciate it. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.